Of all the gaming mysteries in the world, there is one that still haunts players even to this day. Pink Haired Link. And I guess haunts is a strong word because some people really love Pink Haired Link and he's their favorite re-endition of the character, at least judging from fan art that I've seen over the years. But where did he come from? Why was he given this hair color in A Link to the Past? Will we ever see Pink Haired Link again? So today, let's just dive into all these questions and find out all we can about Pink Haired Link. Now, believe it or not, Link with pink hair didn't originate in A Link to the Past. He actually came about in 1987-1998 in a Zelda 2 manga comic book. And there is no question that this was the pink hair on there. I mean, just look at it. And it's not just one comic book, but three comic books all referring to Zelda 2, which we all know is a game directly before A Link to the Past. Now, some would say that the pink hair actually came in 1986 on this comic book cover, but honestly, this looks more red to me, so I'll focus more on the Zelda 2 ones. Now, while all these comics are 100% the first time the series has ever seen Link like this, was this the inspiration for how he looked in A Link to the Past? So let's dive deeper and look at the official artwork for A Link to the Past from the game's manual. So let's go straight to the source and go to the Japanese one since it came out before the United States. And let's take a look at Link's hair. Every single picture in this manual, he is drawn with light brown hair. And I mean every picture. Not a single image of him has pink hair in this manual. If the pink hair was a statement Nintendo wanted to make for this game, they would have put that image in the manual at some point or another so it would match up with the game. But having him not match up either means it was a mistake internally or something had to be changed in the game due to limitations at the time that caused it to differ from their vision. Personally, I don't think the mistake theory is viable because with Zelda being one of Nintendo's main properties and being this many years into the franchise, there is no way this was made through all the approval of the company and no one would have noticed. It'd be like if they accidentally put blonde hair on Mario and Super Mario World, this type of mistake would have been noticed immediately and fixed. So if we can safely assume that the hair color difference was a mistake, then it has to have been changed for a technical reason. So what could have been this technical reason? One idea that is often tossed about is that there are only so many colors that a character sprite can have. The developers wanted to make the bunny link pink in a dark world, therefore a color had to be eliminated on normal link for that pink to happen. And thus light brown hair was deleted and replaced with pink. There are a few reasons this doesn't make a lot of sense though. First off, if you look closely at Link's sprite, he has light brown on him already, which means the correct hair color sprite was there anyway and it could have been used. If they had wanted to have light brown hair, it could have easily been done. Secondly, around this time, games already had the option to create different sprites to control. I mean, look at all the Final Fantasy games. This means they could have just used a completely separate sprite for the bunny than they were for Link, and there was no need for the pink to overlap. And lastly, if you look at the very first screenshots the game ever put out in the beta version, it is obvious that the pink hair was a very early design decision. So much so that there are actually no early screenshots or footage at all with anything except the pink hair. So it had to be designed that way for a reason from nearly the get go. If it was just a lack of sprite color choices, they would have just fixed it early on before they reached any form of completion. Plus, a few years back, some programmers dove into the code of the game and they fully determined that the light brown hair was completely possible. Yes, a Link to the Past was in the very early days of the SNES, and so programming was a little bit different, but if Nintendo had wanted light brown hair, Link would have had it. So therefore, the pink hair had to be done on purpose and wasn't due to just a lack of color choices. And this leads us to the final suggestion and the one that makes the most sense. The blending in of Link on old CRT televisions. TVs now are not what they've always been and playing retro games on newer TVs often gives a false illusion of what gaming was like in the 80s and early 90s. Even if you turn on the scan lines or CRT modes in some of these newer games, it's still not the same. It's closer, but it's not the same. TVs at the time were often very blurry and games either had to have large sprites or deep contrast to characters from the backgrounds to make sure everything was visible to the players. In addition, games on TVs at the time were only outputting at a max about 240p, which is really low. Saturation, contrast, and tint could all be easily adjusted incorrectly, and games were often just accepted on the lowest quality of image. Trust me, I remember the old days growing up on an old CRT TV. Now, Nintendo being aware that not every kid would have a newer TV at the time, and would be using some TVs that could date back to the late 70s, wanted to make sure that their characters in the game were as trackable as possible in the new highly detailed SNES environment. So how can they ensure that players actually know fully well the location of their character and have max visibility? 
create aspects of the sprite that forced the character to stand out more, thus the blue shield and pink hair were born. Yes, these two things go hand in hand. While his tunic could easily blend into the background a bit, you could always track where Link was just a little bit better due to his hair and his shield. Players on more advanced TVs wouldn't have an issue regardless, but players such as myself growing up, a more easily defined character made the game all that much better. Notice in all the older Zelda games on NES, the backgrounds were nearly singular colors and the opposite of Link, so he always stood out. With more happening in the background on the SNES, Link needed to stand out more and this was honestly the best way to do it. Would it have ruined the game if they had just blended him in and done brown hair? Probably not, and players would have gotten used to it over time, but the separation just made this game all that much better for players with older TVs. But despite this being the most logical reason why Nintendo made the decision, they've never given an official word on the subject. Even throughout all the books and articles and interviews, it's never come up. Maybe one day they'll give an official reason, but I have a strong feeling that it was Nintendo just looking out to give the maximum number of players the best experience possible. I mean, that's what Nintendo has always done. But will Pink Haired Link ever make it back into the series again? For a mainline Zelda game? I have serious doubts, unless it's like an easter egg or an unlockable or something like that, maybe even like a wig you could find and wear inside the game but they'll never make it the main sprite or design for a character. It wasn't really their intention even for A Link to the Past according to the design manual. I could also see in like Super Smash Bros that they allowed the pink hair to be one of the uh, alternate designs for the characters. I mean they did a Shadow Link just a few years back and I could see it being a fun thing for them to do as sort of a callback and I think a lot of players would go for that option. But I even think if they did a remake of A Link to the Past, the actual game, that they would probably change it back to light brown just because that was their vision for the game. They'd probably have it in there as an easter egg like I said earlier that you could obtain, but Pink Haired Link as a main design for any of the games is probably gone forever and the best we can hope for is an easter egg or an alternate costume in one of the offshoots that he appears in. But what do you all think? Do you ever think we'll see Pink Haired Link ever again? A mainline game? An offshoot? Let me know in the comments down below. And also, what do you think is the best explanation for the origin of the pink hair? Let me know about that in the comments as well. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Check out my other videos listed up above. And as always, go out there, find a great game to play, and just simply have a great rest of the day.